Hey there you guys. So I'm just going to go through my foundation routine. What works well for one person doesn't necessarily work well for the next person. But I'm just going to show you uh, because so many of you guys have asked like what foundation does do I use. Like I have mentioned it in other videos but it's still a question that comes up quite often and you know fair enough. And how, how do I make my skin look so like nice or whatever. Uh, I don't know. I think it's okay. So I'm just going to show you from my horrible being naked face to not being naked face no more. Let's go back to naked face time. Bye. I know what you're all thinking. Ah! Yeah, for a person who never wanted to show their face without makeup on it to anybody ever, they seem to be doing a lot of that lately on the internet. This thing I usually do is... Well, I have stopped using primer lately. Usually I would like to start by putting on a primer. The reason I haven't been doing it is because the primers that I like are both like $50 and that's too expensive for me at the moment so I can just go with that. So I'm gonna start by putting on my favorite eye cream uh, Nivea Q10 just a little bit. Mm. Now you may also notice that my skin is really really bad at the moment. I don't know why. I'm just suddenly blessed with more spots than I've ever had in my life. Yeah, I don't really like to wear moisturizer under my makeup. If I do wear moisturizer, which honestly I don't really do very often, put on before I go to bed after I wash my face or whatever. Anyway, <coughs> I always give my eyebrows a bit of a bit of a touch up with a disposable razor. You couldn't even tell that they'd grown back, could you? Haha, uh -huh. yeah, they're almost entirely grown back. See, if I shape them off, it doesn't really make a difference but I just give them a bit of a touch-up uh, every other day to make sure that they're completely gone. Uh, always got to be careful, obviously, common sense. Be careful using a razor blade close to your eyeballs. So people are constantly asking me which makeup it is, uh, which foundation makeup it is that I use. And, well, uh, it's a personal thing. I have, for most of my life now, been searching for the perfect foundation. And I feel like just about every time I've found really good ones, that they end up being discontinued. That's happened so many times. I used to use this CoverGirl one, was discontinued. I used to use a stick one, discontinued. Just I used Dainty Doll, that was, that was the best one I'd ever used. It was perfect and very light and discontinued. But what I use at the moment, and it, please, for the love of fucking everything, please never discontinue this, or I don't know what I will do, is Illamasqua Skin Base Foundation in Pure White. I don't recommend everyone or anyone necessarily go straight into using pure white makeup. It doesn't look good on all skin tones. If you want to use like a really pale colour, sometimes it's good to get a white foundation and mix it with another foundation that's closer to your skin tone. The other reason I personally have had a hard time finding a matching foundation is because um, being naturally a ginger, you can probably see my skin tone is kind of naturally slightly pinkish. Generally one skin is either like yellow tinted or pink tinted. Most people have a kind of warm yellow tint to their skin, not many people have pink. I didn't figure this out for a long time and I was always trying foundations and wondering why I always looked like I had like, you know, liver disease. I always kind of looked too orange, too yellow, even the colours that called themselves ivory. Really it's just that I needed one that was slightly pinkish. But anyway, um, this is my favourite foundation and I like it because I like quite heavy foundations. I know a lot of people don't, don't like really thick things. Some people prefer to use even just like a light powder. But personally I like to really pack it on. So I apply my foundation with a latex sponge and I just put it straight on the sponge and put it in like blobs. In my face. So yeah, like I was saying, this is quite a thick foundation and a lot of people find, a lot of people, it's quite a polarizing one this, as much as I absolutely love it and it's perfect for me. It is perfect for others as well, but some people find that it's too, too thick for their skin or too oily, because it is quite oily. Um, but I absolutely freaking love it and I don't know where I'd be without it. They don't just do pure white, um, Elamasca does this skin base foundation in a whole lot of different shades. It's really good. 
and I like wipe it with my fingers around my eyes so that it, it blends because I don't know about you but you know one <clears throat> especially as one gets older one gets like creases around the eyes so I'll kind of um, just blend it, blend, bleh, rub that in with my finger so patting As you can see, in some places I'll kind of rub it, rub it across or rub it in, which I usually do like on top of my eyelids and um, forehead and stuff, some like that. No real reason why. But... I just like it. This is quite, I guess what you call buildable. This is quite buildable in the sense that you can kind of layer on top of layer until it's like you know, virtually flawless. I've never used a concealer ever even though I get quite bad spots sometimes. One of the reasons for that is because again like most foundations concealers are usually way too dark. Yeah, concealers are usually way, way too dark for the foundation I use and I, I never manage to cover them up properly. Also, always do them ears. And next. On top of the liquid foundation, I'll put a powder foundation, and this one's my favorite. This is Laval Pressed White Powder. This one's quite quite well used, as you can see. If you're lucky, and if you're watching this at a time when it is in stock, I'm selling some of this in my shop. The link to which is in the description box below. <laughs> with a little powder poof thingy over the top. I usually start with my nose because I like that to be the thickest. Sometimes if I want my skin to look a little bit less like super white or and maybe like a little bit darker or more natural for work or for a job interview. Like I said before about mixing uh, a white foundation with a, a colour that suits your skin, like a natural colour, I use this one because it's quite cheap and it's a good consistency. It's not like this one, is, like I said, is quite thick and gloopy, whereas this one's quite thin and comes in this ridiculously stupid glass bottle. I hate those, like why? Are you even supposed to get it out? I don't know. Cover Girl Clean Foundation in Ivory because it's a pink tinted liquid foundation. But like when I do that on the sponge, I'll blob some of this onto the latex sponge first, followed by some of the white and just it sort of blends together while putting it on. Mm -hmm. so I do that sometimes, but this is my like everyday foundation. Now something that is very important but I think a lot of people neglect to do. How I did my ears and neck also I'm always always bleh, I'm almost always wearing clothes that shows off my chest so I'll put foundation on my chest as well putting it all together. During the day I start by putting sunscreen on. Also kind of serves to apart from protect obviously protecting from the sun it sort of thins out the foundation a bit so it goes even further. This is one of my favourite sunscreens, Nivea Light Feel, because it's a non-greasy sunscreen. Anyone that doesn't like leave a slimy layer on your skin really, because most sunscreens are quite hard to put makeup over the top of. But seeing as it's the evening, I'm not going to put that on, but what I do do is, this is the one I put on top and it's, it might seem a bit too fancy just for just for body. The Elamasca Rich Liquid Foundation in Pure White, so it's even thicker than the other one. I put this on with my hands usually. And I just kind of rub it in. Now, loads of people have asked me, is there 
some technique you have for not getting makeup on your clothes. <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. If, if anyone has a technique for not getting makeup on your clothes, please tell me, look, I just did it just then. I just did it just then. I just got some foundation on my top. Mm. Going, going underneath, trying, just, just being careful really. If, for people who wear light coloured foundation, it is one of those problems where you do end up getting it on your clothes. Which is a bit short. Oh, please, please don't judge me on my horrible floral bra straps. It was very hard for me to find bras that fit, and this was the only one I could find <laughs> that fit after like two hours of trying on all of them in the shop. And I must say, it's the ugliest thing I've ever seen, but it fits. And I like it for that reason, even though it was heinous. So it usually go on a little bit more smoothly with sunscreen, so I'll put on a little bit of sunscreen like on the shoulder just to sort of demonstrate that. Look at all my friggin' freckles! Blah! See? Thins it up, makes it go on a little bit easier. Ta-da! Dookie. The last step is one I'm not terribly good at, but it's quite important, and that is contouring. The thing is, like when you're using white foundation, like what do you even use to contour and highlight that isn't going to look weird? Well, I'm still not entirely sure, but here's what I do. Um, essentially highlighting, kind of out of the question, like how do you highlight white? What I've done before is used like shimmery white powder, like on my, um, I don't have any at the moment to demonstrate because I haven't actually done it for ages, like a shimmery uh, white powder usually on my cheekbones or something because that you know light will reflect off it and make it appear a little bit brighter but that's sort of really as far as I can see the only way of highlighting white foundation anyway what I use for contouring and I guess I'm kind of lucky that I just have these like long thick bangs here that I can use to cover up um, my cheeks anyway but what I use is a combination of like sorry this looks a bit munted I know this is L'Oreal Lush Raven black eyeshadow it's quite it's not a very heavily pigmented black eyeshadow so it sort of comes out kind of like grayish more than anything and my Rimmel Smoky Quartz <laughs> eyeshadow and I take that on a just this sort of fluffy brush here I'll like dust on a little bit of each and suck in my Mm, stuck in my mouth like that so I can see where my cheekbones are. I don't have particularly prominent cheekbones, mm. but this makes it look like I do. Ow, and I kind of squeeze the brush a little bit. Mm. That's how I found it the easiest way to create the right sort of shape is to squeeze the brush to make it kind of like that. And from there I let it go fat again and kind of like, you know, blend it out so it looks a little bit less weird but not not going over the cheekbone but just going like under it so that it looks less just like a stripe and from there I go under sort of underneath there just sort of give the illusion of having like a narrower jaw and do the same on the other side And what I do, which is probably not what everyone needs to do, but I've never been particularly fond of the shape of my jaw, personally, so in order to give it a bit more of a narrower sort of appearance, I'll contour the bottom of my jaw as well and blend it in under my chin, like this. Often I'll use like a bit more of the the black under my chin to create more of a shadow. It, you know, it's a subtle thing. It can look pretty bad if done wrongly. And I'm still practicing. I'm still getting better at it. Um, gradually. <laughs> kind of going in like a circular motion I find is better for blending that part. Ta-da! Lastly! This is not necessary, but this is just something that I do. Let's take a teeny, 
any little bit of those colours on a brush like this sort of shape. Small, thin, arched shape. I don't know the names of them. And I dab it off on my thing, on my hand so that there's not too much on there because this can go very wrong. And if you watched my like thick lip tutorial thing, this is what I do because um, I'm not terribly happy with my thin lips so uh, in order to make them look a bit more a bit fuller before I put on all my other makeup and stuff I'll do like a little line down there just just below my lips contour that part of my face ta da and done I'll take off the stupid headband Take off the stupid headband. And yeah, so there we go. Looking pretty weird. Still without anything else. So yeah, there we go. That's the foundation I, foundations I use and how I put them on. As you can see, once I've put like put my bangs down, you can't see how bad a job I've done at contouring. So that's that's quite good. So hopefully maybe you've gotten something useful out of this. Either way, thank you very much for watching. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. I put out at least two videos every week. Take care of yourselves. Be nice to each other, stay spooky, and I'll see you next time. Bye!